literature on potato post harvest losses and mycotoxin contamination in human food chain i would now like to request dr r s pundeer sir principal investigator of this project for his welcome address over to you sir thank you vishita uh, thank you first of all in this uh, special lecture series uh, on behalf of uh, our university and on my own behalf i would like to welcome our uh, guest speaker today uh, dr alexander prithikanga uh, deputy ceo sustainable agriculture and livestock initiatives uh, scotland uk welcome you sir very much and uh, also i would like to welcome my colleagues uh, dr samit datta ccpi of this group and for which this lecture is being organized today uh my colleague dr y elart ccpi of uh, hr group and uh, vishita khanna of course all the participants who are mainly the students pg students faculty members and some other interested in this area uh mainly for those who are joining first time uh, to our this activity of lecture series or maybe activity of our center a brief introduction about this project and uh, this project uh, started two and a half years ago about and this is a project Uh, sponsored by, or you can say, we got it from ICR and World Bank on 50-50 basis. A very prestigious projects in the broad area of uh, marketing and trade, agriculture market intelligence, uh, which is very very specific, very very important nowadays. So uh, mainly to our uh, uh, guest speaker, uh, Dr. Lagnende, you may like to know some basic objectives of uh, this project are uh, uh, price forecast and demand and supply. you know nowadays uh, this price forecast is very very important particularly in case of uh, the high value crops where price uh, volatility is the main culprit so mainly the fruits and vegetables this is one of the area of our research and second one is on marketing and marketing including all aspects of market and international trade that is uh, the global intelligence the broad area of uh, uh, agriculture and allied activities livestock dairy fisheries poultry all and of course farm producers organizations in community markets these are four major areas we are covering under research in this very prestigious project on agriculture market intelligence at our institute anand agriculture university anand and we are also conducting uh, the capacity building programs of different types including the special lecture series which is uh, today we are uh, organizing uh, this uh, lecture series one lectures from our uh, guest speaker dr elengen so these are few uh, important activities though number of other activities are also there but as far as this topic is concerned our uh, basic focus is on marketing and trade and in marketing and trade this quality aspect is the far more important nowadays and uh, this is an integral part of sir, uh, some research projects we are doing uh, we already have done something marketing and of course this today's lecture more specifically on potato potato harvest losses and mycotoxin contamination in the human food chains when we talk of global intelligence or maybe the marketing at national level and overall business in agri and allied sector this quality aspect and post harvest losses they constitute the most important aspects and today we are here to listen you sir we are very keen to listen you to understand some of the issues so that uh, this can help us all our pg students uh, phd scholars and faculty members to understand the nitty gritties in this area and we can also address based on the, our understanding in our research projects here and this is the purpose of this project the basic purpose of this project under nahib cast national agriculture higher education cast component at uh, our center is to improve the quality of teaching and research overall quality of higher education and this topic uh, today you are here uh, we are very keen to listen you is most important one so with these few things once again i welcome you and all the participants and over to you sir over to you vishita please for further proceed yes sir thank you so much sir for highlighting the key aspects of the project to all the listeners it is now my pleasure to invite dr samit datta sir core copi of food and dairy group for his welcome address over to you sir Samit sir, your voice is not audible. Uh, sir, now you can yeah, speak. Yeah, now it now am I audible? Yes, yes sir, yes sir. Yeah. 
So a very good afternoon to all in India and a very good morning to uh, Dr. Alexander Rutikanga, uh, guest speaker of today's lecture uh, session. So who is joining us uh, from Scotland. So I, Samit Dutta, I'm an associate professor and head of food business management department of Anand Agriculture University. I heartily welcome uh, you all to this special guest lecture session on potato post-harvest losses and mycotoxin contamination in the human food chain. As uh, our uh, principal investigator of our project, uh, Dr. Aris Pundir was uh, telling, and we are, I mean, those who are already associated with us, you all know that Anand Agriculture University, Anand, has been awarded an Indian Council of Agriculture and Research World Bank funded prestigious project and established a center for agricultural market intelligence under Nahib Kast. So as a part of the capacity building component of this project, we are organizing various workshops, training programs and lecture sessions, uh, lecture series on various important issues relevant to the project. Besides capacity building component, the project also has various research goals. So one of the research objective is to study on growth and export opportunities for value added processed food products manufactured from six selected horticulture mm -hmm. crops, namely potato, tomato, onion, banana, pomegranate and mango. So uh, we all know that potato is the world's fourth largest food crop after maize, wheat and rice. Uh, since the introduction in India in the early uh, uh, 17th century, the potato has been widely grown and consumed in this country. The spread of potato farming in the Indo-Gangetic plain has been one of the most notable advances in the crop's global uh, history during the previous half century. So India has risen through the ranks to become the world's second largest potato producer as output has increased in recent decades. Uh, losses of horticulture produce, of course, it, it's, a, it's a major problem. It remains a major problem in post-harvest chain in our country. Potato is no exception. So due to its perishable nature, a significant quantity of produce is lost at different levels of marketing as well as on the farm for different reasons. Uh, coming to mycotoxins are uh, uh, toxic secondary metabolites produced by certain molds. So consumption of mycotoxin contaminated food or feed can cause acute or chronic toxicity in human or, and animals. So these are nat naturally occurring and can enter our food chain either directly from plant-based food components contaminated with mycotoxins or by indirect contamination from the growth of toxigenic fungi on food. So mycotoxins can accumulate in food and feed crops in the field and during storage, as well as during transportation. Mm -hmm. So it will be very interesting to understand the post-harvest losses of potato and mycotoxin contamination, not only for food safety and quality concerns, but for processing and value addition of this important crop also. So the deliberation of this lecture session is not only important for our capacity building, but also from research perspective. So to give us a detailed insight on this important topic, today we have with us Dr. Alexandre Rutikanga, Deputy Chief Executive Officer, Sustainable Agriculture and Livestock Initiative, Sali, Aberdeen, Scotland, United Kingdom. I welcome you, Dr. Rutikanga. Listening to you would be an opportunity for all of us to understand the post-harvest losses and mycotoxin contamination associated with potatoes in the human food chain. So without wasting further time, I would hand it over to Ms. Vishita for introducing the speaker of today's guest lecture. Yes, Vishita. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for highlighting the importance of today's topic and its relevance in the product as uh, in the project as well as in today's era. I would now like to introduce our speaker for the lecture, Dr. Alexander Rutikanga. He is Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Sustainable Agriculture and Livestock Initiative, Sally. Sally is a registered NGO, a think tank, and major delivery agency to the into the entrepreneurial drive of agriculture, renewable energy, environment, market linkages, and ICT as a cross-cutting tool, all geared towards promoting the principle of a circular economy in Rwanda and other regions. He also holds a degree, a PhD degree in agriculture from the University of Aberdeen, UK. He holds two master degrees, that is Master of Advanced Studies in Integrated Crop Management and Master of Science in Crop Sciences with specialization in agricultural entomology. He has worked for Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences, Beijing, China, as a foreigner research expert. He served CGIR International as project coordinator and scientist, actively involved in research studies in Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. He secured a contract with Netherlands Biopink as a coach under Yalta Business Accelerator Program for young entrepreneurs in agriculture. He has also worked for University of Rwanda as a lecturer 
and researcher in the pest management, pesticide science and technology. He was the director of research and consultancy and a lecturer in the Faculty of Agriculture at the University of Technology and Arts, Mutamba, UTAB. To his merits, he has authored and co-authored over 38 publications, including 11 journal articles, five book chapters, two conference papers, and over 20 agricultural extension materials. He has also developed a number of prototypes, including the most innovative one on biopesticides from Tegetis extract on the control of maize I mean, under storage conditions. He also piloted the development of four varieties of peas three hybrid maize genotypes and 11 peanut varieties. Dr. Alexander has a blended experience and is conversant with the state of art technologies, including the application of IoT across various sectors locally, regionally, and internationally, which, he has, which, he, which has placed him in the middle of rich global network of public and private key economic players in Europe, Middle East, Asia, and Africa. He's fluent in English, French, Kinyavad, and fairly can communicate in many languages also. He also is a public speaker and hardened organizer of public events, including those at international scales. It's an honor to have you with us, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. That's great, that's great. Let me share my presentation. Okay, can you see the presentation as well? Yes, sir, we can. That is great, very great. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for uh, a comprehensive introduction of my uh, bio. Uh, without uh, further ado, uh, it's a pleasure and a honor uh, to speak to the great people of India, a population of 1 billion 300 million of Indians. And it's a privilege, it's a privilege. Thank you very much. So allow me to take you through um, uh, potato post-harvest uh, losses and uh, mycotoxin contamination in the human food chain. So uh, here's the content of uh, our discussion around the potato post-harvest losses and the mycotoxin contamination in human food. So we shall first go through the introduction with key uh, facts about potato. Uh, number two, uh, potato post-harvest losses and the, the causes. We shall go through also together uh, some uh, uh, knowledge uh, on mycotoxins and uh, human uh, health. Uh, I will also uh, discuss and uh, show uh, uh, our research and intervention agenda on this topic. And uh, uh, we shall also get time to know where we are now, what is our contribution as we speak now. And uh, we shall also see what are uh, the future prospects and uh, cooperation. So uh, well, to give it um, a good start, uh, we need to know that uh, the world population growth projection is uh, very important uh, to know our role in availing uh, food uh, for the growing population. So according to the world population growth, uh, it is supposed uh, to be growing up to 10 billion, 0.9 million for the global world population. So, but uh, the growth rate will be reducing, uh, which is uh, which was not the case uh, for the year 1987. So, it is also important to note that uh, as we speak now, the world population is around 7 billion, 900 million. And uh, that uh, uh, by the year 2100, the world is expecting a population of 10 billion 875 million. So, uh, what is the, uh, the quick growing populations and what are the projections? And uh, therefore, we shall end up by knowing that we need uh, more than 60% uh, for the global food uh, so that we can feed uh, the growing uh, population. 
So, for example, we can see as we speak now that China uh, from 2020 uh, to 2050 uh, to 20, yeah, 2020, it is the first populated country. But from 2050, India will be the first world populated country. And uh, number two will be China. It is uh, not easy to understand how Nigeria, we know now, will be number three in the world. And that is a very strong message to African countries. Then again, looking at Ethiopia, it will be number eight. Egypt it will be number 10. And DR Congo, it will be number six. White Tanzania, it will be number nine. That is by the year 2100. I'm not sure whether it will be there, but maybe my kids and your kids will be there. So, but for the good of our generations to come, so we have to plan ahead and make sure whatever we do is sustainable and we make our efforts to have food for the growing population. So another key message here, as you see in the table in the bottom, so it is that more developed countries, the population will be declining, while less developed countries, which means Africa and Asia, so their population will be growing up to 88% of the global population. So again, by the year 2100, so the population of the African continent will be nearly equal to the population of the Asian continent. There is also a message here. So for countries to plan accordingly. So one, we need to produce food to feed that population, which will be exploding. And number two, this is also a big opportunity for doing business. So let us now talk about potato, our topic of the day. Potato also named the king of vegetables. It has origins in South Peru, North Bolivia, and it is consumed by 1 billion population worldwide. And it is a wholesome food with a high content in dry matter, edible energy, protein, Potato is also a raw material for processing industries like the chips and other potato bioproducts. And uh, we need also to know that uh, uh, India, uh, in India, potato is ranked number four after rice, wheat, and maize. Uh, maybe uh, this place um, may have changed. We have a good audience here to also uh, update us. So uh, potato is also uh, number four in a country in, in Rwanda, my country of origin. Uh, that is after a banana, a potato, and sweet potato, and the cassava. Potato yield ranges uh, between 10 and 50 tons per hectare, as India is concerned. But this statistic may have also uh, changed. So we can also get some more update from the right people in this meeting. Then a potato is also estimated at four tons per hectare in the UK, while it is around 10 tons uh, uh, per hectare in Rwanda. So we have a much effort to make so that we can meet uh, other countries' uh, global uh, production. So we need to also know that uh, a potato is a semi perishable commodity. So therefore, it needs to be handled with IKEA. So um, on the right, uh, this is how a potato look like, looks like. I am sure we all know how it looks like, but uh, we need also to know that uh, it is a super a crop which you can grow uh, in the whole world. So these are the uses of potato, uh, diversity of uh, recipes, and uh, potato is a, hand, a handsome uh, returns to commercial growers, uh, while for the last couple of years, the demand of potato was expected to raise by 40% worldwide. So this uh, makes potato a great uh, commodity worldwide. So what are then the post harvest, uh, uh, the potato post harvest losses and their causes? So uh, initially, we can start noting that uh, a study conducted in India in 2018, uh, uh, 9 point, 
40, uh, um, this unity is equivalent to one kilo, to 940 kilogram per hectare. Uh, we are uh, registered at the farm level as lost, uh, while a 5.96 kilogram uh, was uh, the loss uh, recorded at the market level, uh, of which 3.27 was uh, recorded with the wholesalers, while 2.68 was recorded with the uh, retailers. So in the United Kingdom, uh, there is, uh, I was struggling to get some uh, specific data on the potato, but uh, globally, uh, generally, there is a 50% food loss. And the same in Rwanda, I struggle to get uh, precisions on the loss uh, of potato after harvest, uh, but they are also available uh, statistics for cereals and tomato. And I could also find some losses of potato, but combined with sweet potato. So we still also have to uh, link with scientists over there and uh, get more updates, maybe uh, for uh, unpublished data. Otherwise, uh, we need also to put it in our agenda and uh, gather uh, such uh, crucial information. So what are the causes of post-harvest losses? Uh, number one, it is a, a physiological losses. Uh, that is mainly uh, the effect of environmental conditions. And number two, uh, it is a, a pathological losses that is mainly due to fungi, a bacteria, and insect. There are other unpredictable uh, causes uh, that uh, we we'll discuss uh, briefly later. So going into uh, physiological losses, uh, which we can also term as abiotic factors, we can note, for example, high or low temperature before or after storage rough handling of tubers after harvest and uh, regarding a uh, pathological losses uh, which we can also rank as uh, abiotic, uh, biotic factors means caused by living organisms we have decay due to pests and uh, diseases and we have pre-harvest factors uh, which are uh, aggra aggravated by uh, storage uh, conditions so the other factors they are for example uh, left um, a potato that are left in the field or loss on the way via transport any any other damage. So then when we are trying to calculate the quantity of potato loss, we talk in we take into account uh, the percentage of the overall loss. Uh, that means including weight loss and the water loss. And when we talk about quality loss, that is the percent decay, uh, damage, infestation, and the unmarketable uh, products. So this is an example of mechanical damage uh, of potato, uh, which is a common case uh, back in Rwanda, uh, in the region and elsewhere, including India. So potato post-harvest losses due to pathological uh, reasons. Uh, on the top here, I have dry rot. Uh, which is caused by uh, Fizarim Solani on this picture uh, with a, a red a background. And uh, as you can see, this tuber rotting it has some mycelia. These are fruiting bodies from Fizarium Solani. And uh, I don't uh, doubt that if a human or an animal ingests this, uh, something can happen in terms of uh, the normal physiological functions of human being. So on the right, uh, this is the symptoms of uh, Vaticillium daily or of Fusarium. So these two fungal diseases, they are hard to differentiate by naked eyes and even by microscope. So we have to move to uh, molecular uh, tools so that we can distinguish them. So then we have Fusarium avenaceum, uh, which cause uh, such symptoms, and uh, Fusarium uh, saffarum, which cause uh, these symptoms. And we have Albrite, which is caused by Alternaria solani or Alternaria alternata. And we have Phytophthora infestus, uh, which cause uh, such symptoms. So we have uh, then uh, mycotoxins and the human health. So what you need to uh, note from mycotoxins 
they are toxic substances that infect many foods with the carcinogenic, genotoxic, teratogenic, nephrotoxic, and the hypertotoxic. So the most common uh, mycotoxins, they are the aflatoxins and the ochratoxins that are commonly associated with the aspergillus. And uh, they are found uh, with the cereals, uh, peanut, cassava flowers, and others, but uh, rarely or not with a uh, potato. So when it comes uh, to potato, the common uh, mycotoxin is in the group of trichothesins, uh, phimonisins, uh, which are mainly from fusarium species. And uh, these are uh, toxic to human and the livestock. And uh, uh, from uh, my search and uh, knowledge background, fusarium oxporum and fusarium solani, they are opportunistic pathogens causing nail, skin, eye, and the nasocinesis infections, to name a few. So there are normally uh, two sources of infection. Uh, number one is from the environment, including food, water, and so on, whatever can come into contact with uh, people or livestock. And uh, there is also uh, the mycotoxins that are produced inside from the gut and the microbiome. So mycotoxins are taken up either by food or produced in the gut may possibly induce an imbalance in the intestinal microbiome. So on the right, uh, you can see uh, the uh, pictures showing an infection by a fusarium uh, uh, species in a human uh, foot. On the right, this is a eye infection, a type called a keratitis. And uh, down here, you can see nail infection, uh, which I grew up observing in the village and the neighborhood but I didn't know it was due to some fungal pathogens, including fusarium that is also associated with the uh, potato uh, diseases. So uh, some studies uh, have uh, helped us uh, to understand the relationship with uh, the mycotoxins from plant and the human health. And uh, from the study carried out by Mr. John in 2006, uh, fusarium species, uh, for example, Fusarium solani, uh, they are infectious to human and the plants, and uh, they are commonly found in the same uh, habitat and environment. So the same authors report that a uh, human clinical isolate of Fusarium solani shared identical Maritidocus haploid with the isolate from plants. So and uh, on the picture uh, on the right is uh, clear, uh, we can see how uh, pathogens uh, from a plant uh, could cluster together, those ones from a human and uh, animal uh, livestock, soil and so on. So now the research and the intervention agenda on this topic. So uh, number one is the investigating the field occurrence and the pathogenicity of fusarium species uh, of potato. Uh, here uh, the focus is uh, on fusarium of potato because it is the one that we will know that has some mycotoxins that can be uh, uh, contamin that can contaminate uh, the food system and end up by causing infections to human and livestock. Then uh, uh, number two, uh, assess uh, post-harvest prevalence of fungal species, uh, their impact on potato and the people. And uh, number three, a partnership for clinical trials. Uh, number uh, four, uh, designing mitigation strategies. Number five, policy formulation. And number six, designing strategies and identify channels for community awareness raising. So where are we now? And what is our contribution? Uh, since 2018, I and uh, uh, my team, uh, we started to understand what is the prevalence of Fusarium species or any other fungal species across uh, potato growing regions in Rwanda, so that we can say these pathogens are in Rwanda and they are likely to be carried on in the storage facilities 
and therefore contaminate human food. So then from our research findings, uh, among the key potato growing areas, uh, the incidence of potato was, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, fungal disease of potato in the field were recorded at uh, up to 46.95%. And uh, uh, we also in parallel tried to look into the soil to see if the soil nutrient are as per the recommendations so that we can be able to interpret what is really making the incidence high in some areas and not. So then at the end of the day, we saw that uh, the soil nutrient content were low and uh, they were below the critical and adequate values as per the, uh, the previous similar findings, uh, which also uh, helped us to understand why uh, the diseases were that much high in some surveyed areas. So as a key message here, which is also something we need to make clear to the audience, uh, the fungal diseases that attack potato. And when we talk about fungal diseases, we wanted to uh, put a line on the source of mycotoxins. That's why we are not going into bacteria and the viruses. So they are mainly from three groups of fungi. Uh, number one is the Ascomycota, uh, which has uh, around 70% of common potato fungal diseases. And among these, we have Fusarium oxporum, Fusarium solani, Paticillium dilei, Paticillium arboretum, Artenaria solani. So we have also a division of uh, fungi called Basiomycota which account for 15% of common fungal diseases of potato. And uh, these two group, groups, they make what we call true fungi. I know some sources, they uh, uh, rank uh, uh, diseases like Phytophthora infestans that cause a late blight among uh, fungal diseases, but that is not true. They are fungal-like diseases and they are ranked as omicet. This also needs to be clear uh, to the audience. So then uh, in our effort to identify uh, what are the, the, the fungal uh, prevalent in our surveyed potato uh, areas in Rwanda, we came to know that uh, uh, we had Fusarium oxporum tiberosi, and uh, the, the images you see here on the left, this is one isolate among the one we collected. Then the, the second a group of pictures here, this is also Fusarium uh, oxporum from a special tuberosi, but another uh, uh, isolate or another kind of thread, slightly different from the other one. As you can even see, this one is a violet while the other one is a pink. So then uh, here on the right, this was a, a true type of Fusarium oxporum tiberosi that was obtained for, from Kabi, which is an international center recognized for uh, research in such microorganisms. And it was used as a positive control to confirm uh, the identity morphologically of the isolate from Rwanda. So these images uh, were generated using uh, uh, the motorized FS contrast microscope, uh, which is the Olympus BX61, if we want to search. So another uh, 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 fungal pathogen uh, uh, recorded from Rwanda was uh, the presence of Fusarium solani from a specialist mati, which is also known to cause the wilting of potato and uh, which possibly can be carried on to the storage facilities and uh, cause and uh, contribute uh, uh, to the circle of uh, microtoxins in the human food. So on the left, this is the, uh, the typical uh, image and the uh, microscopic images of Fusarium solani, while on the right, this is the, the positive control of uh, the same species obtained from Kabi as a reference for confirmation. So uh, the third one was uh, Fusarium equiseti. Uh, Fusarium equiseti is a normally a cosmopolitan uh, a fungus we find in the soil all over the world. 
and uh, which also has uh, some role in the spread of mycotoxins that are infectious to human and uh, livestock. This was also recorded and confirmed to be prevalent in Rwanda and in uh, potato growing areas. So we went also further to see what is the difference between these three types of fungal pathogens from potato, Fusarium sorani, Fusarium oxporum, and Equiseti. And we found that by measuring the fungal fruiting bodies or spores like microconidia, uh, macroconidia, and chromidospores, there were a difference between the three types. So we also tried to observe their growth on uh, different media, uh, growth media, and uh, the media will influence their growth rate, but uh, the growth of each and every of the three uh, uh, types of uh, Fusarium uh, were consistent within the same group, but it was a different uh, uh, from uh, Fusarium oxporum to Fusarium sorani and the Fusarium equiseti. That was also a key difference to uh, put them into a separate group and confirm that they are really different. So the same was done for Fusarium sorani. The same was done for Fusarium equiseti in terms of monitoring their growth. So we also went further uh, to study uh, their uh, characteristics at the molecular level. So we ran PCR tests and uh, we sequenced uh, the isolate and uh, uh, they were uh, confirmed. And uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, we used uh, ITS, which is a uh, um, I can say a general primer that can, that can detect uh, any uh, fungal species within the group, uh, Fusarium and others. So as you can see, uh, we collected a number of um, uh, 60 isolates and uh, um, among them 63, they were from the group Fusarium oxporum, 10 Fusarium equiseti, while uh, eight were from Fusarium uh, uh, species. And uh, Fusarium solani, uh, they were uh, detected at a level of uh, 5% among all the isolate. So we used also another primer to confirm the identity of uh, these species with the now focus only on Fusarium species. And they were also confirmed to belong to uh, Fusarium equiseti and uh, Fusarium uh, sorani and the Oxporum groups. So we used also another uh, 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 third type of primers so that we can see if we can segregate them uh, to, to specific groups. But uh, these types of primer of primer also end up by confirming the identity as uh, for part the two uh, previous uh, primers. So we also moved some further miles uh, to uh, carry out some of our genetic analysis of the fungal isolate quality from Rwanda. And uh, for example, uh, Fusarium solani, this is the true type in the red frame, which was obtained for Kabi. It clustered together with the Fusarium solani uh, I used from Rwanda, which helped us to confirm that the Fusarium solani from Rwanda is the real one, even if uh, the evolutionary uh, analysis. So the same uh, also happened for uh, Fusarium oxporum, which clustered uh, together with uh, the true type of, obtained from Kabi, which was also a great move to confirm the presence of Fusarium oxporum in a potato uh, fields in Rwanda. So uh, again, uh, for the phylogenetic analysis using the uh, TF1 alpha, uh, it also uh, showed us uh, almost the same result, but uh, with a more improved uh, relationship. For example, you can see at this level, this isolate from Rwanda, 100% uh, 
matched with the, the true type uh, that was uh, obtained from Kabi as a positive control. So uh, this was also a very amazing uh, finding. So we also uh, uh, did the same and uh, compared uh, our isolate with the database in SBI and uh, we had consistent uh, uh, result as far as the phylogenetic analysis was concerned. So regarding the phylogenetic analysis of sequences obtained with uh, the third primer, which is beta tubulin, it also confirmed uh, the same evolutionary relationship as per the two uh, previous uh, primers. So that was not uh, enough. We had to confirm that uh, the uh, Fusarium isolate from Rwanda can really infect potato. And we tried to see the susceptibility of key potato varieties grown in Rwanda. So uh, by carrying out uh, in vitro uh, or pathogenic tests, we could find that uh, the isolate from Rwanda of the all the types of Fusarium species, Sorani and uh, Oxporum, they could kill potato varieties. And I can remind you that here we used clean tissue culture plantlet from a recognized institution, which means these uh, uh, plantlet were clean and they were not diseased. So, but as you can see, within 10 days only, the whole plantlet were uh, wiped out. So we also moved another step and uh, tried to do the inoculation, but under greenhouse conditions on different varieties. And uh, the result also confirmed that uh, the isolate from Rwanda can infect potato and uh, cause uh, diseases. So that was not enough. We had to re-isolate uh, the uh, fungus from inoculated potato so that we can confirm the coach process. So then in the isolate from inoculated potato, they were uh, similar with the mother cultures that were used to make the inoculation. And that was uh, proved by uh, the cultures in the petri dishes and by also the images from the uh, microscope. So also uh, the identity of the isolate from the creative potato uh, was also confirmed using PCR tools and uh, later sequenced and uh, the, the, the identity of uh, uh, the re-isolates uh, was also confirmed using sequencing. So, and uh, as a general discussion, uh, we came to know that uh, potato uh, production is hampered by a variety of patient diseases. And uh, the majority of publications, uh, they discuss potato wilting as uh, caused by a particular wilt. And uh, in Pakistan, for example, uh, up to 70% of inve investigated potato fields uh, were uh, uh, attributed to Fusarium wilt, uh, while uh, Rastonia sona serum was uh, recorded in Rwanda as causing wilt. But the difference here was that uh, Rastonia sona serum is uh, characterized by white bacterial ooze, which helped us throughout that. Uh, the we think was uh, not uh, caused by a bacterium and a fusarium, uh, but a bacteria. Uh, so then uh, we came up uh, to know that uh, fusarium and bacterium could be the cause until we confirm it uh, using the morphological and the molecular tools. So we also came to know that uh, there is a possibility for combined infections as a part of the previous uh, studies. So um, uh, the investigations carried out in Rwanda, uh, they showed us uh, the incidence and the severity of fungal with diseases of potato and uh, the prevalence of these diseases were uh, uh, different according to uh, district growing potato and the uh, morphological and the molecular uh, identification confirmed the causal pathogens of potato wilting in Rwanda to be uh, by to be a uh, Fusarium oxporum from a special tuberosity and a Fusarium sorani uh, from a special uh, mati. Uh, 
So then uh, morphological and molecular and phylogenetics uh, analysis uh, uh, also uh, helped us confirm uh, compared with uh, the true types obtained from Kabi that uh, these isolates are really uh, Fusarium oxporum uh, tuberosi and uh, Fusarium uh, solani mati. So then um, as a conclusion, uh, the full identification of Fusarium species from Rwanda adds new uh, knowledge uh, for the African farming and the plant protection scientific communities. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, Fusarium species have not previously been reported in Rwanda with such an empirical study but it was reported in Tunisia, Algeria, and South Africa. So the inoculations uh, of uh, potato with uh, these species also confirmed that uh, they can uh, cause diseases to clean plants, plantlets, and uh, the isolated uh, uh, fungus uh, from inoculated plant uh, were also identical to the uh, mother cultures. And again, some varieties from Rwanda showed some levels of susceptibility, where others were somehow uh, tolerant to these two species newly discovered from Rwanda. So then uh, fusarium with potato, if not controlled, it can cause up to 53% of yield loss. So then uh, we need studies to uh, identify and uh, uh, take records of the real read, uh, yield loss uh, from uh, uh, potato field in Rwanda. And uh, we need also a multi-location and uh, cross-season trials uh, to, to be conducted uh, because the other ones were in the greenhouse and in vitro. So then um, uh, because we have seen that uh, there is an issue with this nutrient, a proper fertilization is also recommended. And uh, there are some findings uh, from the greenhouse that uh, recorded azostrobin as one of the fungicide that can control these two diseases uh, together with the uh, redomir. So we need also uh, open field trials to confirm this case in Rwanda. So what are the future prospects and the cooperation? As you can see, uh, we've now seen that uh, there are various causes of potato post service losses. The first and the foremost part is the now known, it has been covered. Fusarium, known to be pathogenic to potato and the people, is confirmed to be in Rwanda. And uh, this lays uh, a bar, a ground to carrying on with the next steps. So, therefore, scientific and uh, financial contributions are expected to enable achieving this life sensitive and long empirical research agenda. So um, uh, these are some key uh, uh, references, uh, some used uh, for this presentation. Others uh, just uh, went through uh, to collect some uh, knowledge about uh, this topic. And uh, if the organizes allow, uh, because I am from Rwanda, from any future cooperation, you may also need to know a little bit about Rwanda. So uh, the key uh, facts about Rwanda, uh, we need to know that uh, the growth uh, of uh, the Rwandan economy uh, is now registered up to 10% uh, uh, regardless of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. And uh, the audience also need to know that uh, Rwanda is a, a growing economy with the opportunities uh, for investment, for example, in manufacturing, agro-processing, tourism, real estate, construction, ICT, financial services, and so on. Particularly because we are an academic area, there is also an opportunity to invest in education. So we need also to know that uh, Rwanda is uh, uh, the second fast growing economy in Africa. And uh, it has a young population, 70% of the population, they are under 30 years old. So Rwanda is ranked as the oldest country, fifth safest country to work at night. And uh, Rwanda 
is also known to be uh, business friendly and modern. It is ranked second for doing business. And uh, we have also a good balance of male and uh, females in uh, our decision making bodies. For example, we have 61% in the parliament and 50% in the government cabinet. So Rwanda is also a, a good regional platform with a strong African hub potential. Uh, if you want to organize meetings, you are welcome in Rwanda and uh, the Rwandan population is now growing bilingual and the Rwanda can release, release uh, 50,000 uh, of graduate uh, per year and the Rwanda is IT ready. It is ranked number one in East Africa and it is ranked number five in Africa for internet readiness. So for any future uh, collaboration, online or face-to-face, -face, uh, you are welcome to Rwanda and I will be more than happy to help. So now coming back to our potato. So uh, I would say, if you like potato, may the potato be with you. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention and uh, uh, let us keep discussing in the coming uh, session part of this session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, with your permission, if we can post some questions now. Uh, there are some okay, questions yeah, from yeah. the audience. Yeah. Yeah. So the first question is, uh, which type of toxins are produced by iBird germination in potatoes? Come again, please. Uh, sir, uh, one person, one participant is asking which type of toxins are produced by the iBird germination in potatoes? Okay, okay. So they are mainly, um, as I, I shown, uh, they are phimosisin and uh, tricothesin. Those are the main toxins that are from a potato. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, he has asked about uh, the processing part. Uh, what is the use of potato starch and uh, which species has the highest amount of starch available? So the, the highest uh, content of starch depends on variety and uh, the agroecology, uh, several factors. Uh, but uh, the use of starch, it is uh, for varied purposes. Uh, for example, candy, uh, sweets, it can be also used in textile industry, uh, pharmaceuticals, to name a few. A few. Right, okay. Um, then uh, there is one question, sir. Is it true that when potatoes are cultivated organically, the contamination with mycotoxins can be lower? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. So uh, I doubt because uh, potato is a one a heavy feeder. Uh, if it receives uh, a, a little amount of, for, for example, of fertilizers um, of chemical origins, and the yield may uh, be low. And then number two, uh, uh, potato is also susceptible uh, to pest diseases, uh, given the area it is uh, uh, happy to be grown in. So then if you don't uh, protect potato, uh, there will be a chance to grow with uh, uh, pathogens like uh, fusarium, for example, and others. So which means growing them organically. Uh, of course, we need some more research to confirm this, but uh, the hypothesis I can put is like uh, uh, growing, the, growing them organically cannot necessarily reduce the amount of toxins that they can get. Okay, got it, sir. And uh, the last question is, what evidence of fungal infection or mycotoxin growth can be found in preserved potato? So how can we detect that a preserved potato lot has some infection? Uh, and is there a quick detection technique for the same? So uh, number one, we can uh, know that a potato is infected by looking at uh, the potato tuber. Uh, for example, as I showed you in my slides, you can see this one is observable. They are uh, this mycelium. Then uh, going in deep, we will need uh, some lab techniques. Uh, normally used, uh, they are uh, 
there is a, the high liquid uh, chromatography, uh, which can uh, help to detect and uh, quantify the amount of uh, toxins. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, now, moving on to the vote of thanks, I would like to request Dr. Lard uh, to present his vote of thanks, please. Uh, thank you, Vishita. Thank you. Uh, on the eve of 5th uh, January, in the uh, new year, we started with the PSLC's lecture that is on the post harvest potato post harvest losses and mycotoxins in contamination of human food chain. Uh, to propose a vote of thanks, I think I would like to say the audience that we have more than 300 participants today is watching the same lecture, sir. And uh, in which uh, you can say that more than 30% are the faculties. They are not from the India, but the outside of India also. And the faculty, you can say all around faculties right now watching the same video, sir. So to propose a vote of thanks, I would like to first of all, thanks our uh, Pacel series lecture keynote address given by the uh, Dr. Alexander Ruti Kanga, uh, Deputy CEO, Deputy CEO Sustainable Agriculture and Livestock uh, Initiative, the Sali UK. Thank you so much, sir, for your deeply and uh, you can say very simple way people can understand how mycotoxin can affect the potato and what will his impact on human health and as well as animals who are consuming the infected potato. Thank you so much for your nice presentation, sir. I think that will be helpful for the, we can say in the same lecture, there are some processor also. I think it will be helpful for a lot for the further improvement of the product quality. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, sir. I would also like to thank uh, our uh, PI, Dr. R.S. Pundi, sir. And he's also Dean of the IABMI. Uh, in his leadership, we have, organized, we have backed this project and uh, sir is cooperating like anything. Thank you so much, sir. I would also like to thank Dr. Uh, Samit Datta, sir, Associate Professor CC5 and I have cast. Sir, I think you are choosing this topic may lead to the more enhancement we can say further in the NAHIP project. That is such topic will be helpful for the, in the long run for the everybody. Thank you so much, sir. And at the end, I would like to thank the Dr. Uh, Vishita Khanna. She has taken a pain to make this event happen. Thank you, Vishita. And the thank you all the participants as well as the NAHIP team member, either from the food and the dairy sector as well as the HRD team. Thank you so much for your planning this event, make this event happen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Dr. Alexander.